let us continue with our lesson and uh, let us see that how we can configure some of the more advanced feature in a uh, firebase crasslytics and uh, what we will do now is first of all let's see how we can close a particular the the issue that it has generated so it has currently generated some of the issue if you check over here which is on uh, on a flash or a splash activity and the main activity and is still on this flash activity and it's on a different line and the detail you can see in the non-fatal and the crash right and the version and the event so event is how many time it got triggered and how many is how many users are affected with this particular issue so what we can do is we can just open up this one and we can close it so let's close this issue so which means that we have fixed this issue and release a bug fix for this particular issue then we can close that one and we can go back to the dashboard over here then now you can see that this has been closed and if you go to this one let's close this one too i can close this one and here you can see some of the options like prevent the issue from reopening and all of this but uh, what we will do is we will go back and let's let us close all of the issue for now and uh, let's close this one too and uh, let me i hope you guys got it so what are all of the keys and the logs and the data and the stack fresh so i hope you are comfortable with it now and uh, we'll just close it for now and uh, let us close all of our bug and now we don't have any issue and if you try to filter it out by only the open then uh, we will see that only nothing is open over here and the filter is you can also filter by operating like uh, which version of os or which version of android is affected by a particular this issue so you can also filter it out so currently we will filter it out by only open and we also have a filter over here like a version right and the build version and the event type what are the event types so these are all of the filtering options that we have over here that's really great and uh, what we will do now is we will send the filter for the user so how we can send that one is let's go back to the application and uh, over here we have to send so currently we are sending both from the debug and the release tree but actually we should only send from the release version of our application not from the debug for just for our testing purpose we are sending it from the debug also so what we will do is we can send the user over here and uh, if i say it dot the we have the option to set the user id so we have an option to set the user ID as the identifier. So how we can uh, set over here, if you go to this particular setup over here, it says that we have to pass the string for the user ID. We already have, if you go to the model and go to the app preference, we have some of the information that we can pass. We can pass like the user email or the username or the user email that, that depend on you so let's pass the username from here so let's go over here because the email is quite sensitive right so email is a sensitive information then we should not pass it to the any other third party server or from where the information can be linked so we will be in, uh, available to set the username so we, why not we send the username so how do we get the username is we have to get the username over here so what we will do for that is i think let let us let us go to the home let us go to the view model and we have already set the preference so here is the preference and uh, we are getting it from here so let's go to the application class over here and we are on create we are creating everything and setting up for the timber debug as well as over here so if we go to the debug tree i think we should get some parameter over here right and uh, in the to do application class we are just planting the debug tree over here and we, we are not passing anything so let's create over here and pass it over here so for that what we will do is uh, let us take a parameter of 
what we need is the app preference so private sorry not the priority uh, private we need a val of app uh, preferences and if we have an app preference now and we can get the app preference dot we can get the username and okay so we need to pass the parameter first so what we have to do is we need a parameter so let me copy this section from here and uh, paste it over here and i need a constant val tag of our user or user id right so user id and uh, here we will set it as a user id and let me copy this tag and paste it over here we have to pass a key value here and what does it this is too many argument passed okay so i think we only need a one argument and what is the error so okay so it's it found that we need a not now so what we will do is that uh, let us pass it as a not now and uh, otherwise you can just go and check so we can just go and check it over here let's check the null preference i think that should be the better just copy this one and uh, if it is not null then let we will go and set that value over here it we can just say the preference right and let's copy this section and just paste it over here and i'll just pass the preference over here that's all i think it should be just a user user id then i can pass this one over here okay that's good and uh, now we can uh, do the same thing okay let me remove all of this the release version we are getting it from the release tree and uh, okay so the user id where is the user id we don't need this one okay that's good and uh, let us go to the the release tree and the release tree also let us do the same thing so first of all we need the app preference just copy and uh, paste it over here so we need to pass it as a constructor argument and then we will just copy this one too and uh, paste it over here okay so we have it and uh, next is that we need to pass it from the our application class that we have extended so here we need to pass that particular app preference so how do we pass that app preference is let's go over here and we will create this one over there just copy this one and uh, let's go over here and let us build it over here and uh, i think we will just set up the private function and set up and over here i will set it up and i'll just say a var of the app preference and i can just pass this over here because we have an application class so we can just say this that gets shared preference and since we have a shared preference now and then we will need the app preference so we have to create the app preference just copy this one and we'll go over here and we'll just say as the app preference so val app preference and also this one as the val okay so that should be enough for us to pass as a and now I can just cut this section and uh, paste it over here. And here we will pass the app preference. So let's pass the app preference as the constructor argument. Okay, so that's look uh, better, right? And uh, we have to call this from on create. Don't forget to call it from here. Okay, and uh, that's look uh, that's look better, right? So we have a set preference, and uh, then we pass that and create an app preference. And after the app preference, we pass it to our the timber debug tree and the release tree as the constructor parameter.
and uh, let's run our application for now. And if you see the application has successfully started, and uh, what we will do now is we'll go back to the, the Firebase console over here, and you can see now it has sent some event, right? So previously it was a four, I think. Uh, I think I crashed it two times, and uh, you can see over here it's a six. And I have removed the filter currently. If you click on the open only, you will not see that one because we have previously closed already closed that issue, so that will be not shown over here because it's the same crash issue, right? So it was the same issue, so it is mentioning here it was closed already. So what we have to do is we have to clear the filter. So if if you found it that this issue has been re-arrived, then I can reopen this particular issue. And uh, if you go back now, and you can see that re issue has been reopened. And uh, now we can go and filter it by the open one. Just apply it. Now you can see that issue. And the main thing is that we have sent the user. So we can find the search the issue by particular user over here. And let me go over here. And I think we cannot see any user. Let me try to find it. So the username, it can be if you go to the application. So we can go to the profile. And the username is of admin. So let us try to find it by admin over here. And uh, we should get some information. OK, so we have identified as the admin. So if you click this one, then we can get all of the information regarding that particular. That's great, right? So if we go back to the dashboard and go to the particular issue, and you can see the stack trace over here. And on the data, you can see the user as the admin. And some information has that one, some information is not there. So if you have passed the, the identifier as the user, then we can get it over here. That's great and about the, the crash analytics over here. And you can just filter it out by the particular user. So we have a lot of uh, options to set it over here. So I hope you guys got it, and uh, I would like to conclude over here. And I hope you learned a lot about the how to handle the application crash, and also about the Firebase uh, crash analytics over here. And I will finally go and close this issue. And I can go to the dashboard, and now currently I don't have any open issue. So I hope you enjoyed this session, and uh, we will see in our, our coming lecture some of the more interesting Things. So stay tuned. So let us meet in our upcoming lecture. So let us meet in our coming up lecture. Till then, have a great day.